What do you say, everybody? And a hearty roll tide. Sunday rollback is live. Big Sexy Elmo is going to be here. And we're going to talk about Bama basketball in the Final Four, which is still hard for me to even say it and even believe it. But we're going to talk about that. Alabama football bringing some big-time prospects in. We'll talk about that as well. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Sunday rollback kicking off. And uh, we want you to be a part of what we're doing. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we're live. And let's get this party started. There he is, the man, the myth, and the legend, and also hungover. That is uh, a guy who needs no introduction, but you guys love and adore him as Big Sexy Elmo from WJLX and Jasper at Brett Elmore Show on Twitter. And before Brett, I, I even say anything else, uh, on this Sunday rollback show, let me hit your open. Thank you. They call him Big Sexy Coming at you from the Walker County. Jasper is his hometown. He's no forgiving free right now. Oh, big sexy. Throwing out those Alabama thoughts. Sneaking out your mom's window without getting caught. Nick gives you the SPs, but Big Elmo is here to please. Big sexy Elmo on the band. That's the only way we can get this party started, right? That is hey, the only way. That that is the only way to do it. And roll tide, baby. Roll tide. Look at that. Look at that. Why don't you just do the show with that on the whole time? Where do you get one of those? Surprise. 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 <laughs> hey, who do you think's more shocked today? Uh Auburn fans that Alabama's in the final four or Clemson fans because they lost to Alabama. Uh they're both grieving together. Um, I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. I used to drive around after Alabama wins in that uh uh 1994 GMC Vandora with that elephant head on and and I would get some great looks. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> where do, I don't where do you even get one of those? Hell, I don't know where I got the thing. <laughs> I, I, I but 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 when I when I when I saw it I was like got to have it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Like I love it. Like that's what a game last night. I mean like we I just can't even really get my hands around Alabama going to the uh, final four and Bob uh, roll tied to you and Adam. Hey, great to hear from you ice as well. Roll tied, Adam, Jim roll tied, man. I mean, everybody easy money. Yeah. I mean, roll tied, baby. Final four. I can't even right. see Bama. I can't even believe it. I would love to sit here and act like I thought saw this coming. The only game in the whole tournament I knew we were going to win. Um, was the ten the uh, uh, um, UNC game, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. Yeah, uh, you were confident heading into that UNC. Yeah, game. it's the I only mean, one. I thought he, we could lose the other ones. Yeah, uh, I was a little concerned last night when uh, let me get my notes here. Uh, Clemson had that fourteen to two run. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I mean, because we couldn't throw it in the ocean. Um. We were missing shots not only outside but underneath, and then we went on a um, twenty to two run. Mm -hmm, I love that. And and uh, uh, in the next uh, six minutes or so, and took command of the game. And um, what a magical run this has been! Of course, we'll get into UConn here in a bit. But um, how about the play of uh, Stevenson off the bench? I know. 19 points. Uh, 11 boards, double-double yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. 
You, do you know the thing about uh, Nate Oates teams is there's always a guy that comes off the bench that gets it done. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Always the sixth man who's, who's coming off the bench and some, somebody knew every, every game. And that's what you need. Yeah. Stevenson, um, who was seven, 11 shooting and five of eight from behind the arc. Um, and another stat, uh, 70% from the floor in the second half, and then 10 of 15 from behind the arc in the second half, 67%. And we were talking, remember the other day, about how well in that first meeting Clemson uh, played. They shot just, you know, an incredible percentage from behind the arc and mm-hmm. on the floor. Yeah. Uh, over 50% from both during the game. And Alabama was in the low 30s in both, and and you just you just it, it just seems like you couldn't uh, they couldn't do that again, surely not. And it's mm-hmm. and it's hard to beat a team twice in in one season. And and we heard about the rebounding situation. That was a key that the talking heads before the game, uh, you know, was talking about. If Alabama just really muscled their way in and and out rebounded Clemson, they would probably win the game, and they did. Um, forty-four to thirty-three on the boards. Well, the, the, that was the biggest shocker to me. Is yeah. it wasn't just you know, hey, here's a bad shot on the uh, the defensive end, and we grabbed the ball. It was on the offensive end, man. They they were fighting for that loose ball, and uh, they wanted it more, man. I I just the, I love the way that they play defense, and I I just got that feeling like these guys are going all out. You know, they they're they're they've bought into what Nate Oates has tried to sell them all year, and, and that that was playing defense. And we saw a little bit of it in that Charleston game, right? Like, and I was kind of mm-hmm. cracking on them because they 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 played good defense, and then all of a sudden they just like the end of the game, they it looked like that same Bama, you know, where they don't uh, want to defend and all that stuff, and then. Here we go to uh, this the next game against uh, Grand Canyon, and I felt like the officiating in that game was just horse crap. I mean, it was terrible. I, I thought they were trying to give them the game. Uh, they put them at the free throw line a lot. They just couldn't make their free throws, and Bama took care of the the free throw opportunities that they got, and you know they did enough. And then at the end of the game, they took over. And then against Carolina, it was a, a you know a battle. They never were really ahead until the end, and then this one was kind of that way until the towards the end of the first half. And then, I mean, Mark Sears just – Pringle was so great too. Yeah, you know, These guys were just – they were so locked in. Talent-wise, they're not even – last year's team should beat these guys by 20. Yeah. Yet this team's going to the Final Four. Explain that. Madness. March madness. That's what Madness. It um, it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. Um, crazy. Um, second chance points, talking about the hustling and everything. Um, that was another thing along with the rebounding. Um, I think we, we, I forgot what the second, uh, chance points were. Um, but, uh, 15 to six, by the way, 15 mm-hmm. to six was the edge of the second chance points. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, uh, your free throw shooting, like you mentioned, Clemson was only 50% from the line. Alabama 15 of 22, 68%. So mm-hmm. killed they um, killed themselves with that. Right. I mean, they they left eight points on the floor right there in free throws. Uh Clemson did. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna have that. And Alabama shot well, you know, I don't know what they could do with UConn. <laughs> they look really, really let's not good. go there. Let's 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 yeah, just let's, enjoy this. Let's, one let's first. enjoy this for a little little while and let this marinate a little bit on happy Easter, by the way, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Happy Easter, everybody. Uh JM says uh we did it. This is incredible. And then he's talking about this. If we really shoot from three, um, we can push Connecticut. I saw Connecticut go on that 30 nothing run. A lot of that, though, was Illinois just not making uh, taking advantage of opportunities. This isn't this isn't the 76, 75, 76 Indiana Hoosiers that won every game. It, they're good. Don't get me wrong. You're t- from here on out, you're going to be playing great teams, right? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that it be, it's going to be Connecticut and Purdue, but who knows? I mean, 
I've told you off the air that NC State is a team that can win the championship. They're as hot as a firecracker right now. They just beat Duke a couple weeks ago, and they play them again. And, um, you know, Tennessee, you know, we've seen Tennessee twice. They beat us twice. Um, <clears throat> you know, are they going to win against Purdue? If they beat Purdue, then, you know, they're beating, to me, the second-best team in this tournament. See, I think Connecticut's won and Purdue's too, but it doesn't matter. It's who wins the tournament is the champion, you know? Yeah, and, and we could, you know, we could look at it and – yeah, the the UConn test is is going to be the biggest of the season, but I, I like I go, I like to say uh, they call this March Madness for a reason. It's always a tournament of upsets. It's it's a tournament of um, um, sometimes David versus Goliath, and 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 the little man wins. You know, that's what makes this tournament so special. And I'm look. On paper, it looks like uh, UConn would would probably run us out the out the gym like they have everybody else. But mm-hmm. but I'm not going to count these guys out, especially if uh, they defend well uh, and if they um, if they get hot behind the arc like they were uh, and, and shoot well from behind the arc. Th- that that keeps you in games, buddy, and and that's what happened down the stretch last night. Uh, we led 62 to 59 and um, Sears and Stevenson uh, hit back to back trays to push it out to nine. And we, uh, we were off to the races then Mm -hmm. Pringle and Stevenson did have their best games. And and when you win a championship or you make a run, it's going to take your entire team doing things, right? It, it's not always going to be Mark Sears, although Mark Sears is the best. He may be the best. This is the best season that any Bama player's ever had. When you pass Reggie King, and you, yeah, you know, yeah. like like these other guys didn't do this. The, these other guys didn't get into the tournament. He led us the first two games. He was the, he was the guy, mm-hmm. right? And then this game, when other people started to contribute, he just started like basically when we needed a shot, making it. Like, yeah. look, it, it hit the game looked so easy to him when he didn't have to carry the damn team on his back. It was yeah. like, oh, okay. Hey, look, Stevenson, Pringle, thank you guys. Yeah. You know, but watch this, Estrada. And then he did that one. How about the one where he like the guy's in his face and then he steps back and just puts the three up on him? Just every time Clemson was about to do something. And how great is it beating them? I don't oh, care if yeah. it's football or basketball. I don't know about you guys. I hate Tigers. I just don't like them. It don't matter if they're the dirty Clemson Tigers or the Auburn Tigers or the LSU Tigers. <laughs> or they're even the, even the crappy Missouri Tigers. Yeah, you know? it, it, yeah <laughs> Tigers. With it. No, and, and, and last night we were hitting those threes, man. I was playing the air guitar every time we hit one. Man, it was so much fun. Is that your, is that your move? Yeah, yeah. Is air guitar your move? Uh, you know, sometimes I would spin it, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell, but, so... We, we would have done a show this morning, and a lot of times, we you know, you record those the night before, and at the hotel, Matt, has terrible internet, and then you, you went off. You went off. The, we lost you. You were off the reservation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I stayed out a little too late last night. <laughs> I saw you, you, you were at a party, and you have proje- a projector TV, and so you, I, you, you, it was like watching the game on the big screen, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like watching it at a movie theater uh, <laughs> uh, in the middle of uh, downtown Jasper, and we're uh, we've got a uh, bunch of folks on the back deck. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Timmons and EJ and Bolak and all of us, we were all there, and and uh, yeah, I have this projector, and my friend just uh, moved into this new house, so we decided to test the neighbors last night. Uh, you know, so we, we, we you know we have the game on, and we're we're all rowdy as all get up, but. Uh, I had a lot of fun and, and, um, and everyone did, you know, uh, I would have loved to have been to Tuscaloosa last night, uh, because if they had half as much fun as we did here in our small town, uh, it was, it was, a, and I saw some video last night from Tuscaloosa and man, you're talking about just a great Saturday night, mm-hmm. a great Saturday night, but, uh, going back to, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the scoring and stuff, uh, I'm, 
I told you off the air, you know, we had five players of double figures. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sears had 23. Stevenson had 19. Griffin right. had 13. Pringle had 16. Uh, and then 10 for uh, Estrada. Um, so um, five players at double figures. Um, and uh, we pull out the victory uh, over uh, over Clemson. And uh, and don't forget, you know, we'll probably get, um, you know, we may get, um, uh, my mind's going blank now, um, the one that's injured. Oh, yeah, uh, Reitzel. Right, so yeah, uh, we may get him back, you know, for the final four. I don't know. Uh, that was mentioned, I think, last night. He's got another another week to, you know, maybe get healthy and and who knows? Yeah, yeah. How about if Bama wins? Uh, the basketball team will have gone further than the football team in the postseason. I didn't think about that. Uh, yeah, put that, that put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. I hadn't thought about that. Um, and 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 some people say, "Is Bama turned it into a basketball school?" No, we're an everything school. Yeah, come on, man. Except women's basketball, we're everything but yeah. women's basketball. Yeah, yeah women's. For basketball. some reason, we we Christy Curry gets the the pass on being very mediocre for for a long time. And, yeah. I, and I, that's the one program that drives me nuts because the rest of them, even even baseball, you know, like you 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 have a couple bad years and they bring somebody else in to try to get it fixed. Um, I'm I'm excited about this LSU um, Iowa basketball game, women's basketball. I'm yeah. I'm all I'm look man, I'm bought in on it. I'm gonna watch it. Angel for LSU, you know, like saw they got into that big fight against USC. And then, uh, you know, Caitlin for Iowa, uh, and she's like the all-time score. She's like the Larry Bird of women's basketball. Didn't she get? Uh, didn't she get offered like five million dollars to play in? Um, um, what's that league? Uh, you see it on TV. Some it's owned by a rapper. Not somebody, somebody help me in the comments. Uh, she got offered five million dollars which is going to be way more than what she'd make in the WNBA. Yeah, I don't know why she's going to the w- she's got another year of eligibility. But she's going to the WNBA, she said. Big 3. There you go. Big 3. Thank, thank, thank you. JM12. Uh, yeah. Um that LSU I team, I am going to tell you right now, man. That LSU team is uh they're they're fi- they're feisty, man. I mean, they they lost the USC in that SEC championship game. They're in their fist fighting, and that after the game, they're like they remind me of like a uh, heel in wrestling, you know? Like yeah. we lost, but the better team didn't lose, you know? The better team <laughs> didn't win. I mean, you know, and it's Those like rowdy Cajuns. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> their coach is like calling out the New York Post. Did right, you see yeah. this? We're right. not. You, I'm going to sue you if you put a story out that's bad about me in this program, you know. And then, uh, and then the Don Staley uh, wanted to come to Alabama. I think you guys, are, are, it's probably been reported, but um, one of the one of the few mistakes that Mal Moore made was hiring uh, Stephanie Smith instead of Don Staley. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was looking back on that one. Yikes. That one was a pretty big mistake. Yeah. I think he got an assist from Marie Robbins uh, on that on that move too. But um, but Don Staley's she's the Pat Summit now yeah. of of college basketball, right? I mean, it, yeah. her teams are always number one, and they she's won championships and. Um, you know, and after that fight, she's like, yeah, this isn't what we want at South Carolina. You know, we're going to make sure that we, we do a better job of handling our emotions. And then you, Kim, the coach of LSU, like they just double down. We should have kicked our ass. You know? uh-huh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like she the, looks like the know, type that would, uh, would, uh, would pull a pair of brass that. knuckles out of her high <laughs> heel. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know? That's a- <laughs> and then, and then the, the Caitlin Clark, I mean, she doesn't even really look like a, an athlete, but then when you watch her like play basketball, she's like just makes all she just makes all those buckets, man. You yeah. know, like so it's gonna be great. They had that matchup last year, I think, for the championship, and Angel taunted Caitlin after they won with the John Cena, except she was yeah. doing the ring, the yeah. ring thing. So now, so that's why I gotta watch that. I wish what it is, was in the final the four. 
I think it's tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I think I'll, so. I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. But our women's basketball uh, is played in front of an audience of 500 people. And we constantly have an excuse. Oh, it was Foster Auditorium. Oh, it was, it's, we can't recruit at Alabama. Oh, now I say go get somebody like Don Staley, who just got out of the WNBA, who um, is fiery and, and can go into somebody's house and say, hey, man, um, you know, why don't you come to Alabama and play? Because we're here to win championships. You know, she did get to the final four. You know, she did. Uh, and it was in the year 2000. I mean, how many of the people that she's recruiting were even alive then? Yeah. And that was like inheriting a team where the other coach like left or something. So I don't know. I'm off my soapbox. But what what the, the bottom line for me is that you said we're in everything school, Brett. Yeah. I want to win at everything. Oh, I do too. Yeah. That's it. I, I do too. Adam says Roddy Piper was the best hill ever. Um, <laughs> when he when he hit Jimmy Snooker with the coconut, <laughs> that, yeah, that one was uh, that one was good. And then the Jake the Snake Robert, team. oh yeah, Jake, Jake the Snake uh, with the with with the snake and it bit um, Macho Man in the um, in the uh, in the ring when he was tied up uh, uh, in the ropes. But it wasn't uh, just a snake, Brett. It was a cobra. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that thing venomous? But that wasn't Piper. That was Jake the Snake. Yeah, it was Jake the Snake. He, no, um, but Piper, I remember WrestleMania 1, 2, and Mr. T was huge back then. Mm-hmm. And Piper and uh, Mr. T had, like, you could tell, like, they really didn't like each other. Yeah. yeah. And they had, like, a boxing match and stuff. It's pretty yeah. funny. Uh, So, UConn. You, so you're you, you are you saying there's there's a chance or no chance or you know look these guys could be beat uh they have been beaten three times this year well let me say this man and and you know you do i say there's a chance there there was a and i'm gonna tell you this brett and the rest of you guys hanging out you you, you might know this story too but You know, back in the 80s, it was a big rivalry, and it's kind of back again, right, Um, between the United States and Russia. And, um, you know, we we had an exhibition boxing match, and the Russian boxer who was, like, hyped up on all kind of, like, steroids (laughs) (laughs) killed the American former champion in an exhibition bout, right? Yeah. So, so the guy that was friends with him, which was another boxing champion, went to Russia, trained in Siberia, and uh, in front of Russian fans, boxed this guy. Right. And no one thought he could win, but he, but he won the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you guys know I'm talking about uh, the great champ Rocky Balboa, the time that he knocked out Ivan Drago. So right. I mean, yeah, there's a chance. Well, they lost to uh, fifth-ranked Kansas this time by four. <laughs> do, you, do you ever see Rocky Four? I, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen Rocky the Rocky movies. Yeah, uh, but that was Rocky. Uh, unfortunately, four. that was not real life. <laughs> that was cinematic. Uh, you know, <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, it, it was not real life. There's there. a I'm statue sorry. of the guy out in front of the uh, out in Philadelphia. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, it's about as fake as wrestling. <laughs> wrestling yeah, wrestling's um, fake. Yeah, wrestling's fake too. And so is the Easter. Wait, Rocky. you just said, well, yeah. And so let me ask you something. You're telling me wrestling's fake when I watched a cobra bite Macho Man. That's right. Uh, <laughs> um, just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, how do you lose by 15 to Seton Hall? Uh, you don't start one of 13 from three, like Jim says. And you're right, Jim. Um, we've got to – the only way we're going to win is that Alabama's got to come out and they've got to play – they've got – they can't get behind to these guys, I don't think. Of course, they lost to uh, – lost by 15 to Seton Hall. Then then they, they turned around and beat Seton Hall at home by 30. Yeah, they, they – so, payback. Yeah, yeah, payback uh, – was uh ooh, I must terrible. break you. I must um, break you. Yeah, uh and, and then Creighton <laughs> beat him uh by nineteen. Creighton. Okay. Well we played yeah. Creighton. 
85 66 was the final in that one. Um, so it can be done. Uh, Who else beat we're, him? we're just gonna have to play the best game we've played all year. I mean, that's and we're gonna have to get lucky that they miss free throws, and yeah. we're gonna have to hope that the officiating isn't bad. And that giant guy, um, yeah, <laughs> he's Goliath. like seven two and <laughs> a half <laughs> and a half. <laughs> Adam, Adam saying, what up? Adam says the honky tonk man assaulted Elizabeth. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. A, diff- a different show, but yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah what? What? Like I watched the big guy, and the big guy's scary. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to get him in foul trouble. Well, when something. they took him out of the game, like they were resting him in the in the first half. And um, and it was like, man, this the, the big guy, you know, yeah. and it got close, and then the big guy came back in, and <laughs> it wasn't close anymore. No, no. Uh, did, did, did that thirty to nothing run remind you of the time that Drago killed uh, Apollo <laughs> Creed? <laughs> You're still stuck on the Rocky movie. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> no, 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 Let's just slow down. Kligan. Yeah, you're you're talking about going to the game. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking Oops. about it. I need to make a decision today and uh uh we need to we need to have a a, a Baba tailgate show um uh party seven, seven two two hundred and eighty pound sophomore, Donovan Kligan. Golly. Seven two and a half. Seven, two uh, and, and a half from Bristol, Connecticut. I must break you. I must break you. <laughs> oh. It's just going to get the ball and just like pound down on people. They, they they would just lob the ball to this guy on the inside, and then he would just like reach over everyone like, like uh, Billy Madison out on the playground, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like, um, if we go out there, um, and try to interview this guy, I'll be like, um, so what's your thoughts on the game, sir? You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's like seven foot something, you know? <laughs> Who's the biggest individual you've ever talked to or been around or interviewed? Me? Yeah. Uh, man, let's see here. Um, some big baseball players. Um, and I'm not talking about big names. I'm talking about I, 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 I interviewed, one of the biggest human beings I've ever met. So yeah, far. yeah. I I interviewed Luke Little, who's on the Cubs, uh, a couple weeks ago, and he's six foot eight, so he's tied for the biggest Cub of all time. Um, that's pretty big for a. Um, a it's a left-handed player. pitcher. Yeah, six foot eight. I mean, he's a big dude. Uh, I think maybe him. I don't remember if. Uh, oh, and you know what? Uh, Steve Hamer. Steve Hamer played basketball at Tennessee, and uh, he works at the University of Tennessee. He's actually a good friend. He played in the NBA for uh, the Celtics, like seven foot one. And um, he um, was when he was at Tennessee, it was back in the Roy Rogers days. So when Tennessee and Alabama got together, I mean, you're talking about just two like, you know, like Godzilla versus uh you know, uh, wh- who's the guy? Wh- what's the guy that he always fights? Godzilla. That there's like the movies out. King Kong. Yeah, like just oh. like raw. You know, like yeah, yeah. two guys just like you know. Uh, I, I, and the crazy thing is, um, is that Hamer might be the tallest guy I know, and he, I'm telling you right now, he's one of the best people I've ever met. Great guy, great guy. And uh, I'm I'm guessing that he is at the Tennessee basketball game, and um. I'm excited for them. I mean, I know there's some Vols on here. And look, I, I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, when it comes to, you know, we beat up on each other in the SEC. But when it comes to these tournaments, I'm pulling for the SEC. Oh, I'm, just, I, I'm just doing it. And, and in basketball, I even pull for Auburn. Now, I got to tell you, in football, sometimes I, I, I do like it when Auburn loses. Like when Maryland beat them this year, it made me happy. Okay. 
made me laugh. Uh, yeah, but I, but if they would have won, I'd have been fine with that. But this when it when it comes to this basketball, man, I'm I'm all in for the SEC. So if but, uh, Connect and those guys can beat Purdue today, it's going to mess my bracket up. But I don't care. I think I had the Tennessee going to the Final Four in my bracket. Look at this uh, comment from uh, J.M. Green, six foot eight girl. Now that would be intimidating. Yeah. Would you uh, let me throw this out there for you, uh, big sexy Elmo? Uh, how tall are you? Five foot. Um, I don't know. Five ten. It's not five ten. Okay. Would you date uh, a seven foot girl, w- or would you be intimidated? That would be pretty intimidating. Like you're in the kitchen and you're like, "Hey, honey, can you grab that up there for me?" Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That would be, that would be really weird. I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Jim. Jim wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't root for Auburn in a ping pong match. match. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I would. I would. I wouldn't care. I'd be like a little the, the you know a little husband. Six foot, <laughs> a little husband, <laughs> <laughs> a little six, a little six foot one husband. <laughs> Boy, I'm, 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 I'm going to bed. And my wife's uh, uh, legs are hanging off the bed, and I, I just get in, and I'm like, oh. my my great grandmother was really tall, so I, it wouldn't intimidate me. I, no, I wouldn't. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't think a seven foot one woman. Uh, no, uh, I don't think I could. But uh, anyway, we're way off topic now. Yeah, let's talk about this. So we don't know, we don't know what time Alabama is playing, but it's on. It's Saturday in mm-hmm. Arizona, and you you're telling me uh, off the air that you're going. You think you're going? I, I, well, I said I, I I've been looking at going. I don't I don't know yet, and I'm I'm going to if I go, I'm going to leave Friday and come back Sunday, and just go to the UConn game. But if we were to pull the upset, I may have to make other arrangements. You're going to feel like um, some of those national championship games that Bama football has been in or yeah. like playoffs, you know, like when they're playing like uh, the year they played Washington or Michigan State. Um, think of some other teams and <laughs> you get to the bowl game and they're in the we're just glad we're here crowd. You right, know, like, yeah, we don't yeah. care what happens. We're playing mighty Alabama right, in the yeah. playoff, you know? Yeah, I'm playing Utah that year and you get, get beat, you know? Well, but we weren't in the playoff. That was just yeah, – Yeah, yeah, that, that wasn't the playoff. But, yeah, no, um, uh, I don't know. Um, and, and I don't know what tickets – last night tickets were – you know, you'd get in the building for uh, uh, pretty decent for uh, – uh, right around three hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, let you me know. tell you this though: if if Duke makes the Final Four, I think the tickets are going to go up, even though they're you, they're not playing Alabama. And the reason is is that you when you buy the tickets, they're supposed to come in packs. Like you buy the whole tournament. Mm-hmm. I went to the Final Four in two thousand two, and you got um. You 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 had to buy the whole like the whole tournament, and then people would sell you know obviously sell games out of the pack you know. Well, so. see, uh, like uh, like on one side, like StubHub, they've got just the Alabama UConn tickets. Yeah, which I'm sure somebody has those, but UConn just won last year. It's a long way from Connecticut. You know, I don't know how many people are gonna travel for that. Right then, you got um, us. Right, it's a long way for us. You know how many Bama f- basketball fans are going to go? I hope a lot. And then, but w- we're developing basketball fans right now. Then you got, um, um, you know, now t- today's games are if Purdue gets in there, I got a feeling they're going to travel. I mean, th- this is like their team. You know, this is their yeah. championship team. Yeah. Um, NC State, a- a- an 11 seed that is absolutely dangerous right now i i almost wish we played them next game because it's 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 a a much more winnable game than playing connecticut and then uh, but i could see them winning the whole tournament and then you know obviously tennessee has good basketball fans and um 
and, and you know and Purdue. So, but Duke Duke is the one that's like the, they're like the Alabama of well, maybe not Alabama, but they're a good they're a great basketball fan base. So if they if they win, they're going to buy up a lot of tickets. And if you go out there, you're going to want to watch more than just our game. You know, you don't you're not going to want to get out of the gym. I mean, you're going to want to watch both games, right? Yeah, yeah, Pro- yeah, probably so. Sam wants to know who's uh, who do uh, we think the biggest difference maker in the game was Sears, Pringle, or Stevenson? I would say Stevenson. Really? And off why the is bench. that? Yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, I, I would say Stevenson off the bench because he scored, you know, the the um, uh, the nineteen points. Um, uh, let's see, what else did he do off the bench? Um, yeah, nineteen points. He had um, three rebounds, and then he was uh, five of eight from behind the arc. Uh, so, you know, I would probably give it to to Stevenson just, uh, uh, in my opinion. Of course, Sears was the, the tournament MVP, though. Yeah. Um, in, in, in this particular game, you know, Sears is always the best player on the floor for Alabama. He's the general. I love it when someone's not doing what they're supposed to do and he jumps on them. You know, I love seeing that. Like when Pringle tried to throw when Pringle threw that ball away and he's like, what are you doing? You know, remember at the end of the game that. Yeah, turn- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what that- yeah, really. And, what, and, what- and also Stevenson had the two block shots. That, that is correct. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this, even with that turnover, I think Pringle Pringle played 32 minutes. He had 16 points, 11 rebounds, uh, and and he had uh, six on the offensive glass, which were huge. Um, he had three assists, a block, and I thought that the points that he scored were at situations where we really needed it. I mean, think about that the three point play he had. You know, he was taking it to the basket and getting fouled. He just, to me, I, I thought it was the best game of his career, and you know, he's had. You know, obviously he's been in trouble and it wasn't like he's like a bad kid, but just not following whatever Nate Oates wanted him to do. I mean, he's been suspended this year. Hey, you got to figure out if you want to be here or not, you know, (laughs) and and now it's like, and also playing his best, you know? Yeah. He played, he played a great ball game. Um, Also the reason why I say Stevenson is he hit that three to put us up by nine down the stretch. Um, And I thought that was a big, um, a big tray at a big moment in the game. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's but uh, uh, look, I don't care who it is. As long as it, 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 as long as the job gets done, I don't care. Right. Right. You don't care. Well, if they're going to win, you know, like if they're going to win the, and get to the championship game, it's going to take everybody playing their best game. Yeah. I mean, like, like this isn't the, it, I don't remember the last time Alabama beat a team this good. You're talking about the defending national champs. You're talking about the number one overall seed. And and unlike us as the number one overall seed last year, these guys aren't messing around. You know, we, we were messing around last year. You know, we weren't, we weren't putting teams away. We weren't locked in. You know, we had off the court issues, obviously, and, you know, and all that stuff. But, but this, this team, they're a killer. You know, they get ahead and they pour it on. You make a mistake, they'll score 30 straight on you. <laughs> you know. Uh would we would we have been a number 1 seed if uh, Betty Aku would have stayed? You asked me this uh yesterday we were talking. Um and I you know what? I mean if on paper, yeah, I mean I think so. Because I think that Betty Aka was kind of like the missing uh, link that, you know, we didn't have with um, on this team. You know, we could have used that that guy to match up against these monsters, you know, but um, I, I but then again, you never know how a team's going to mesh. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you can't complain because we're in the final four. I mean, um, Adam, thank you for the super chat. Roll Tide, brother. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think would be the best game plan against Duke? 
UConn, remember when Mr. Wonderful turned on Hogan? What a dis yeah. Well, I, I was disgraced by Mr. Wonderful too. And I don't think Mr. Oh, Wonderful man. I don't think he was ever a baby face again. Mm-mm. You know, like he turned heel, um and stayed heel. And stayed heel. Uh didn't he tag up with somebody for a long time? I think so. I can't uh see Mr. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it seemed like he did. Uh, the, uh, but I'm not sure who it was. It wasn't Coco Beware, but anyway. No, uh, <laughs> but what do you guys think the the best game plan against UConn is? I think you just gotta you you gotta make your shots because if you don't take advantage of the of of the opportunities to shoot and make baskets, uh, watching that game yesterday, the reason why Illinois. Um, the reason why they lost is because they just weren't making layups. They weren't making shots, and and then they they played tight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and I was wondering too about Adam's um, second comment about slowing the pace down. You know, I thought about that. Do you slow try to slow the game down a little bit? But that's just not our style of play. Um, you know, we love to run with that ball. Um. I, you know, I, I, I think, yeah, I think it comes down to a couple of things. Uh, the, the percentage behind the arc, um, your three point shooting, uh, if it's hot, um, I also think you've got, you've got to hit your free throws. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then, uh, try to contain the seven, two guys as, as much as you possibly can, maybe try to get them in foul trouble. There's one thing that that I'm really, really uh, believing in now is um, uh, Nate Oates is uh, a very, very good coach, and oh, uh, yeah. I, I think he will. Uh, I think he'll have a really good game plan for these guys. Um, so uh, I can't wait for Saturday. It's a Saturday, Monday event folks so remember that national championship game on a monday night and uh man i hate those more than anything it's it this is what it comes down to is i think you got to keep the pace going fast yeah but you got to hit the threes because the threes are what opens up the you know the lane right to get to the basket they, they with that big guy, they're going to want to try to defend the three and force you to go in and then let him just like, you know, basically block all your shots and intimidate you and force bad shots and all that stuff. The way you the way you neutralize that is that you shoot from from, you know, three points. And, and even if they score, even if they're able to go inside and beat you up inside, you'll take the three for the two that they're getting. The math works, you know. The analytics works. Then it it just comes down to Sears, Stevenson, you know, Griffin. Those guys got to hit those threes to, uh, you know, Pringle, you know, whoever. I, you got to hit those threes early in the game because then you saw it when when we started hitting the threes on Clemson, it it absolutely spread out their defense and opened yeah. up the basket for drive points. Right, and that's yeah. the whole thing. No mid-range stuff. Either you're 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 shooting a three or you're driving to the basket and you're putting it in from point blank. But but in a game like this, you have to do everything that you have done well and you have to do it well all game long. Yeah, you're going to have to put put together 40 minutes and um you're you're going to have to probably play very physical and that's something that I uh, we've seen Alabama do as of late, um, I was ecstatic last night when we took a charge. Uh, do you remember <laughs> that? I mean, it was like, <laughs> Here, Sam. we, we Sam. took a charge. Yeah. And, and look, Sam, I, I 100% agree with you on this one. <laughs> Best way to win is put big Elmo in a Jersey. You oh, might not be as tall as, elbows. as, as, as a uh, clinger or whatever his name is. Uh, but you you know what though you would go in there and and definitely bang around with them. And I play dirty. Do you you would <laughs> use your five fouls pretty fast? I, yeah, I, I would. I would. I'd probably yeah. And 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 when you foul, uh, you foul hard. Clinging. Foul yeah. Hard. 
you would go in and maybe take his kneecaps out. You were telling me before that you were going to um, Phoenix and you were going to give uh, Klingon the Galuli. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just, I'm just kidding, Connecticut fans. <laughs> Here comes the Walker County boy going to Arizona, and he's on a mission. Tanya Harding style. <laughs> We're going to neutralize the threat inside. That's right. <laughs> Their bus broke down? Oh, no. <laughs> there was – so you guys know I cover baseball. And back in the back in the 70s, um, the Orioles and the Oakland A's played. And I want to say it was 71. And Baltimore was in the World Series 69, 70, and 71. And then the A's 72, 3, and 4. And they won. The A's won all three of their World Series. They're the only team besides the Yankees, by the way, to win uh, World Series championships. And there is an Alabama tie to this. The Birmingham Barons were owned by the same guy that owned the A's, a guy named Charlie Finley. And Bear Bryant Jr. worked for Charlie Finley. And Bear Bryant was friends with Charlie Finley. You know, back then, but um, unrelated, but going down the line of what you talked about, one of the games was in Baltimore and then they were flying back to Oakland and someone called someone called a bomb threat on the A's plane. So the A's ha- were stuck in Baltimore airport because they had to check and make sure there wasn't a, right, a bomb yeah. on there. You can't tell me that that wasn't someone with the Orioles or some Orioles fan that was like, you know, hey, we're gonna get these guys and we're gonna we're gonna give these Oreos the the the, the edge Oreos. here. Oreos. We'll give these Oreos the, the the edge here with this bomb threat. Right. Yeah. Uh so you know stuff like that really does happen. I don't think it's as easy now. Oh, oh yeah. I mean you've heard you've heard so many stories of like uh team hotels where the uh fire alarm will go off at like Yes. Three in the morning or whatever, <laughs> and and I mean just crazy stuff happening. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean Final Four weekend coming up. We got two big games today. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, and um, I don't know. Do you have any any type of uh, prediction for today? I want to go. I want to go. Um, I'm going to go underdogs and I'm going to go NC state, Tennessee. If NC state and Tennessee both win Tennessee's in the final. Yeah. Cause they're going to beat them. And Adam, man, thank you again, brother. He said, I think we ha- have to play extremely physical to win. Uh, by the way, when Volkov requested that we all rise for the singing of the Russian nat- national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> I stood up and someone dumped a beer on me. All right, so he's talking about Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik were like back in the 80s. They were oh, this. Oh, man, they were bad. They were the heels, uh, the super heels. <laughs> I had the wrestling toy. Hey, and you ever heard the Iron Sheik tell us, we catch bad heat. We, we have to, we have to, uh, we, we'll go to arena and they will pull a knife on me. You know, and I mean, he, I mean, they were everybody hated them, and uh, yeah, I mean, they were big time hills. Yeah, uh, and uh, that Iron Sheik documentary is really good if you watch it on uh, whatever it's on Prime or Netflix yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Sheiky Baby is dead now. I know he just passed away. Yeah, uh, but Adam, thank you, man, and um, the super love. The I, I could have broke Hogan's leg. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a lot of people out there going i don't even remember wrestling in the yeah, 80s yeah, yeah, we like, only I had don't th- know what they're talking about right, like, we only had three channels so yeah. like we, we it wasn't like we you could just come on youtube and talk about alabama basketball i mean it was like uh, so, so, saturday belonged to wrestling <laughs> yeah uh, uh what, what was uh yamamoto toko yamamoto or what what was his name yeah out of uh <laughs> it'd be over in memphis or whatever memphis wrestling yeah uh, 
I don't know. Oh, man. Um, all right, you want to talk a little football before we get out of here? Some sure, recruiting? All right, Alabama football practice, guys, is um, in full swing. And, yeah, we still do play football in Tuscaloosa. You're going to have the 8 day game coming up on the 13th. And it's been really an amazing camp. Uh, obviously, some bad news with Jalen Hale and, you know, a broken leg. And, you know, we'll see how long that he it takes him to get back. But someone that we were hoping to – you know, that would be a contributor. So fingers crossed on that. And a lot of guys coming to town, Brett, um, and taking in visits and kind of picking up the momentum. And one of those guys is coming all the way from Carmel, California. And if any of you guys remember Skip Powers, the great Skip Powers, he was the uh, one of the sports information guys at Alabama, but uh, and a great friend of mine, one of my best buddies from Carmel, California. And uh, also, um, who is who is the uh, the guy in Dirty Harry and Unforgiven and uh, the actor? Clint um, Eastwood. The guy's name's Clint Eastwood. He was the mayor of Carmel, California. Uh, uh, okay, that's why this uh, this is uh, familiar to me. Yeah, yeah, Carmel. It's a it's a, it's a really beautiful place. But anyway, Jackson Lloyd is set to visit April second. Uh, they I think he was going to try to be there for the eight a game, but he's playing all these other sports. He's a very good athlete. Tell us about Lloyd and you know kind of what he brings to the table. Uh, big old uh, offensive tackle, six seven, two hundred ninety pounds. Uh, he plays just about uh, every sport, football, plays basketball, he plays baseball, um, all league in basketball with his size. He averages like 15 points and eight rebounds a game. Um, he um, and, and, and it's obvious why he's, he's good in basketball and in football, too. He's got an 80 plus wingspan. Jeez, he could uh, fly to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, he could. That's what he was actually planning on doing. Uh, it's safer than <laughs> flying in an actual jet now. It's probably um, better than flying United. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, uh, he, he's he's just going to put the you know the 80, 80 plus wingspan and uh, come on cross country. But um, no, he uh, uh, good athlete, um, 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 and uh, he's got offers and and folks looking at him like Cal and UCLA. Uh, Washington, Tennessee, Alabama. Uh, he was offered by Tennessee. Uh, Minnesota has offered him. Auburn has offered him. Florida's offered him. Oregon's offered him. Um, but, you know, he's a four-star prospect. And um, uh, he he's leaning towards staying on the West Coast uh, with Cal and UCLA and Washington. But uh, who knows? Maybe we can... Show him some of that southern hospitality here in uh, Tuscaloosa and uh, sway him our way. Uh, we've we've done well on the West Coast. This we staff have. was in Washington. They have a lot of connections to those schools out there. I was worried at the beginning um, when they got here that um, you know some of the rumblings I heard made me question whether they were going to be able to lock down Alabama or it was going to, they were going to be motivated to it. And what I found out is, yeah, you know, they've done a great job of that too. And so, uh, you know, bringing in a guy that they feel like is a difference maker like Lloyd is a good idea. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. All right. Another guy that I thought was worth bringing up that's set to uh, come visit Tuscaloosa is Corey Amos, April 9th. This is a guy that we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, out of um, Louisiana. Uh, did I lose you? By any no, chance? no, I'm here. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, he, he's from Louisiana. I don't know a whole lot about him. He's a. Some services have him as a three star. Some have him as a four. Uh, but he's a he's a linebacker from Louisiana. He also runs track. But um, um, back in um. February, he committed to Ole Miss, um, but I don't know if that's still standing or what. Michigan has offered him uh, Mississippi State, Miami, um, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, but uh, like I say, he's committed to Ole Miss, but he may be one we can sway. Okay, yeah. So another guy that you're interested in seeing what happens, um, th this group, 
is, um, you know, on a heater right now as far as commitments go. And you feel like this class is going to fill up fast. It always does. Yeah. So, you know, getting those guys to come to Tuscaloosa and, um, you know, and check it out. And then, you know, things crank back up this week, Brett. And, you know, uh, practice schedule wise, I mean, we're getting closer and closer to that 8 day game. Yeah, we're getting really close to A day. It'll be, uh, well, what, two weeks from yesterday? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we got A day coming up. And uh, just a handful more practices. I don't know how many days they go this week, uh, but um, uh, maybe three, maybe four days they go this week. I'm not sure, but I don't have the schedule in front of me. But uh, yeah, we're we're inching closer to a day. How exciting! I mean, the final four weekend will be next weekend. Uh, then we get we get past that. We win a national championship in basketball. Then we'll go to Tuscaloosa. And uh, for the A Day game the following Saturday, what do you uh, uh, let's let's talk about this? I guess this is really where I want to kind kind of um, end end the show. But you just said win a ch- national championship in basketball. Getting to the Final Four is a big deal. Sure, a really, really, really big deal, and it's yeah. never happened before. Right? Could Alabama win a national championship? And and of the teams that let's just we we've got two on our side of the bracket, they're gonna have two on their side of the bracket when today's over. But could we really win a national championship? And what what would that look like? Well, first of all, yeah, I think so. And I went to Curry High School here in Alabama, and it's a Curry is an unincorporated area. In Walker County, there's going to be C. Mick. There's going to be four teams left, and there's going to be two on each side of the bracket. And my math, if my Curry math serves me correct, that means we're going to have a 25 percent chance of winning this thing. Well, yeah, I know that, but I mean, like, realistically, I mean, what what do you think? Have they handicapped the game with UConn? I mean, we have to be an enormous underdog. Uh, I don't know if they have uh, um, set that yet or not. Um, let's see, 12 hours ago, um, according to DraftKings, opened UConn has opened as an 11 mm-hmm. and a half point favorite. Yeah, yeah, 11 and a half. And and you know the um, funny the, the funny thing is Jake Coker's got this formula right, yeah. And and he says um, like when when that when that te- uh, uh, UNC game came out it was four and a half or three and a half it went to four and a half, and he's like everybody in the world's going now why the hell is this thing not like eight and a half? And so mm-hmm. he always he says that those are the ones where you take you know you, they're begging you to take Carolina so you take Alabama. This yeah. is exactly what I expected. An enormous, <laughs> enormous underdog for this game. Do you um would would you take Bam eleven and a half? Man, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I it, it depends what Bama we get. And I think a lot of you guys in the comment section and and, and watching right now uh are saying, you know, I mean you can well, you can win every game you play when you get that far, but you can't you can't mess around. You know, like like I said before, that when Alabama played Florida in the 09 SEC championship game, do you remember how dominant that Florida team was? Yeah, yeah. They they were they won in 08. They were undefeated in 09, and no one thought Alabama could win. Because it w- because for them to win, it was going to take a colossal effort. And Alabama, um, and and you know, and just the entire team, the way that the entire team played, was it was close to perfect. And that's what it took to beat them. And really, it wasn't even a close game. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You know, like like we we kind of kicked their butts. I mean, the second half, you know, took it over. I just think that for Alabama to beat UConn. It's going to take 
Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Here you go. Here you go. Is that good? There we go. <laughs> Roll Tide, Cheryl. Um, <laughs> but I had to, because I was putting Brett up as the center, the centerpiece here for it, like some of his. His, uh, the, I'm the centerpiece. Well, you know, big sexy. I needed you. Yeah, to, there you go. you yeah, gotta yeah. be on that side to be able to go big. Anyway, um, it's gonna take shooting threes, it's gonna take playing defense, it's gonna take luck. You know what I mean? It's it, you can't miss layups. Um, you 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 can't you know not defend. They have to have an off day. It's gonna take all of those things to win. You know, the the you know, the eclipse is supposed to be coming too. So will the world <laughs> Are the moons going to align for us for a championship? <laughs> I mean, you know, they don't were stare at it. <laughs> they, they were saying all this stuff, um, uh, you know, when Alabama played Miami down in the Sugar Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, oh, they don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. They only came up there just kicked their ass. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to play a perfect game. And they are going to have to be off. Right. That, Sam, we know that they've lost, but have you seen them, like, kill people? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we know they've lost three games, but they've slaughtered everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, they... <laughs> <laughs> They're murderers. Like yeah, you can't. Right. they're like, they're close to being criminals. Yeah, I'm not even sure how you're allowed to have someone seven foot two in on a basketball team that, that's as good as this guy. <laughs> like he's, right, right. you know, he's not like you know, like sometimes they'll put like a seven foot person out there and they look like they've never played a sport in their life. You know, right, right, like right. like they're trying to catch the ball, but it's like they're wearing boxing gloves and. The, <laughs> <laughs> like they turn around and shoot and they just got no touch that this guy can play. Yeah. This guy is actually good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's almost like, like you say, it's almost criminal. I mean, the guy can catch the ball and if he's underneath the basket, he can just reach up and just drop it in. You well, know? And, and this is something else you and I talked about yesterday. I would just bring it up on here. We played Connecticut last year, guys. And I know that everybody wants to forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, um, it, it, it felt a lot like Apollo Creed when he fought Drago, <laughs> you know, Bama's Bama this year got beaten up in some games. Right. But last year's team, I mean, they were, they didn't really get beat up a lot. They got beat no. up against Connecticut last year, yeah. but it's a new day. It's a new season and roll. <laughs> <laughs> UConn's not a machine. It's a man. It's a man. That's a great. Do you remember that line there from Rocky? Go. There you go, Adam. You're right. <laughs> Rocky's You're like, us hope. he's growing that beard in Siberia, running through the snow and <laughs> punching yeah. meat. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yeah. I just, I, I guess we'll, we'll start breaking the, the, the game down this week, but. We're still in that 24 hour window of enjoying it. And no, no. I, this is the first time I've won it like Alabama event gear in a long time. Like I've got to get my final four hat or shirt or like something, you know? Hey, 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 yeah. Yeah. I need, I need some of that merch. And, um, uh, <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've been watching the tournament and, and we're all superstitious. And so we've been watching it over at my, my, my one friend's house. We've been watching it. And me and my other other friend that lives uh, next door to me, we wear the same clothes now to every game. Yeah, and he's down to like the same underwear and everything. I mean, yeah, yeah, everything. Right. Um, the so, crazy thing is that you guys will wear those all week too to get right, to the right. game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we haven't changed clothes in three weeks. So yeah, thank us for uh, for uh, this run. This magical what do you call run. that? What is it? What do you guys call that? It's uh something stupid. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, right? Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, he's, you know, my buddy this morning said, uh, "Yep, gotta wash the old undies for this uh, upcoming week." And I was like, "Those are lucky undies. I call them Lundies." Lundies. <laughs> Lundies. I said, "Don't, don't, don't put them out on the porch to air dry in this glorious weather, because somebody might steal your lundies from yeah. the porch." Yeah, like a cat or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a cat, a dog's out there just dragging it around the yard. Hey oh, guys, lucky undies. 
<laughs> we, we have gone off the rails today. We but have, you guys we have in the comments section, I want to know this before we get off here. Give me your, what's your lucky thing, right? Is it clothes? Is it socks? Is it a, a seat on the couch? Is it a place to watch the game? See, because, Saban had the lucky penny. Yeah, his his daughter gave him that, right? Yeah. Hey, and by the way, I was at a bar, a bar in Chicago Friday, and the guy, it's the Alabama bar. I talked about yeah. this, uh, almost home, and it, it is like sweet home over there. It's the new Alabama bar in Wrigleyville. And the guy in there was like, yeah, Saban's daughter was here like yesterday. Really? <laughs> yeah, or something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, but th- maybe she brought that lucky penny for the uh, the if it's even true. You know, th- those guys are great, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Uh, do you have any type of lucky thing? Do you have a? Well, uh, yeah. Let me get into this, okay? Um, uh, and it's just Easter, and and I'm spending it with family, the Bama tailgate family. Okay, so uh, when you reared back in your seat, I thought you were going to show us your Lundies. <laughs> <laughs> When 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 I was in school and and I got to school at Alabama, Gene Stallings was head coach and we were good. And then um, we got Mike Dubose and you know how that went. And then we got um, Franchoni and he was OK. You know, we weren't terrible, but we, we weren't good. But we, we beat you, you know. And then Mike Price who I was bartending in Tuscaloosa when, uh, when, w- during the Mike Price era. So, uh, I actually saw him in, um, in, in action and he was great. And he liked to you pull out that credit card and buy everybody's drink. So, you know, surprise, surprise. like him, but yeah. he never coached a game. And then, uh, didn't that, didn't he get in trouble in Pensacola? Yeah, for yeah, something yeah. I can't remember what Before it was. I lived down there in that yeah. area. I might have to go by there. We should do a show from that place. I think I think we need to do an investigative <laughs> series on this. The the, the the uh you know what really ha- the the true Hollywood story, the true Tuscaloosa story of Mike Price with Nick and Brad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm standing outside of an infamous club here in Pensacola where apparently something bad happened <laughs> yes brett he came in and he just had all that money and uh we- <laughs> said something like roll baby roll and we were rolling, baby. We were rolling. And, and- <laughs> so so when shula came you know like we 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 thought we were gonna like every year we think we're gonna be good even when yeah, we yeah. sucked back then right yeah. so i did i had i had lucky stuff like i had a lucky polo i wore to the game I had lucky socks. Uh, maybe I think I even had a lucky hat. And then, you know, and, and it wasn't that lucky because, you know, you would wear that stuff and lose anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and and so when uh, and we would talk about this, you know, so when Saban took over, uh, I remember I, I think it was one of my buddies step. He said, uh, he said, you can throw all that lucky shit away. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. like like saving came in and just like changed that fast like yeah, okay. it, it, it was pretty quick yeah. <laughs> forget it forget it you don't yeah. need it anymore so All that's right. my my lucky story all right guys look happy easter everyone adam thank you for the super chats thank you guys for hanging out with us uh today and we'll we're going to continue to cover alabama we just felt like a live show was in order with the uh with, with bama going to the final four the first time in in school history, what that game meant, the job that Nate Oates did uh, and is done with this basketball program. You know, I implore Alabama to figure out a way to get a good gym for this guy, because the minute he leaves, what do we have? You know, we're, we're, we're women's basketball with Christy Curry. Where we we make <laughs> the tournament? No, no, I'm telling you, Brett. Yeah. She makes the tournament once every eleven, uh, every eleven years, or twice every eleven years, and and right. you know that they're not making a run. I mean, they're not beating anybody with her, and she's still going to have a job. You know, like right. we got a guy that is pushing for a championship every single year, whether it's an SEC championship. And when you get to the Sweet 16, which he's done uh, th- really three out of four years because they didn't have a year in 2020, right? Right, right. Um, you're, you're right there. Mm-hmm. And finally, like, 
this was the year where they they broke that ice and I mean he's going to be able to recruit off of this. They're going to get better players because of this. And I just feel like um, this program is uh, it, it's in a great spot. So, Adam, uh, thank you. Happy Easter, Sam. Happy Easter to you, Todd. Same to you. All you guys hanging out. Happy Easter and roll tide. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow. And happy Easter to you, uh, Big Elmo. You too, Mick. Roll tide. I'm going to give them this. This is an Easter gift from from us to you guys. They call him Big Sexy. Coming at you from the Walker County. Jasper is his hometown. He's no forgiving free right now. Oh, Big Sexy. Throwing out those Alabama thoughts. Sneaking out your mom's window without getting caught. It gives you the XP for Big Elmo is here to please. Big Sexy Elmo on the band I tell it is short. Roll Tide!